All right, welcome, grade sevens. This is some of your review materials. Uh, so for a review, we've got a mid-year review coming up where we're adding and subtracting decimals, uh, doing some uh, adding and uh, uh, subtracting of fractions, and also our square roots and representing uh, integers. But uh, for the grade sevens, you are strictly doing the integers and so it's not the square roots itself. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna cross out that square root stuff right there because that's not on the grade seven uh, mid-year quiz. So this is the video for adding and subtracting decimals. Uh, what's gonna happen is you have a copy of this, you've got your clipboards, you've got uh, everything that you should need. And I'm going to do it right in front of you. It will be rather quick, but I'll post this video up so that you can see it at a later time. So first it says front end estimation. And the first thing, if you can't read this quite, which you probably can't because I'm only shooting in uh, about 720, I think. There we go. Um, you should have this in front of you. If you don't have it, the PDF is on the blog post. And when you're using front end estimation, you are not solving. Now, every time I give a quiz like this, I always get kids, they put in, you know, four decimal zero two five, and they go like this. Don't do this on yours. And they go like that, and they go like this, and then they just start solving it. And they go, okay, and that's another 11 and eight and nine. They say, there, I'm done. And then I circle it and say, nope, that's incorrect. And I say, that is not front end estimation. That is the exact answer, and this was not what you were asked for. What you should be doing is this. Well, that's really close to four. In fact, that's way closer to four than four and a half or five. So what I should do is I should go, well, what's four plus, boy, that's really close to six, isn't it? That's pretty close, so it should be somewhat close to 10. That is front end estimation. Is it a little blurry for you? Oh, is this subtraction? Oh, thank you, my bad. We are doing subtraction, so I'm gonna go like this. So it should be close to minus two. Well, it's a good thing you pointed that out because maybe if I did this, I might realize that it's far off. So when you're doing front end, make sure you're just doing part of it. So let's do front end for this. Now this one's a little tricky, check it out. Where's the decimal? There is no decimal. Well, I guess I'll just go with that as a complete number. And then that's what, like five and a half? Is that closer to five or six? That's closer to six? You just add the six on there? Well, I guess that's a good front end estimation. The next one, is that closer to two, closer to three? I, could I do two and a half maybe? What's it closest to, two, two and a half, or three? Which one is it closest to, two, two and a half, or three? Two and a half, three and a half? Okay, two and a half plus three and a half. So my answer should be close to six. And that is front end estimation. 15 minus, should I do 13, 13 and a half, 14? 14, so 15 minus 14. So my answer should be close to one. And that's it, that's front end estimation. So from the front end, you're just going, well, I think it should be about that, so I'll run with it. Okay, number two. For each problem, each of the problems below, first use front end estimation to find what the answer should be close to, then solve for the answer. So it's asking you first to do what we just did. If you don't do that first, then you're just disregarding the question and getting it wrong. So let's use front end first, it says, Michael is on vacation, has been given a budget of $100 spending money. He bought a t-shirt for $19.87, a hat for $15.99, a lunch for $18.99, a special lunch. He must have gone for the buffet. I don't know. That's pretty expensive. And some new shoes for $28.76. How much does he have left to spend for the remainder of his trip? Well, first it says that we're doing an estimate. I see he has $100. And then we're gonna start minusing all the purchases that he made. So let's use that front end estimation. We had 100. Then we're gonna minus, let's see, it was 1987, so minus what, about 20 bucks? Minus about 16 bucks? Minus about 19 bucks? And minus about 
What should I put for 2876? What's that close to? 29, okay. 29 bucks. So if we take that down, let's see, that's gonna be 80, uh, 64, 54, 45, 25, uh, I think that's about $16. Does that, does that ring with you guys? Probably be about 16 bucks. I'm gonna go reverse and see if that adds up. Let's see, because this should all add up to 100 then. So if I go, this, 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 I think it's about 16. So my answer should be close to $16. Now it said, use front end estimation, then solve. Well, if I'm gonna solve this, I'm just gonna go like this. Minus 1987, minus 1599. Can I do all that? There we go. And I could do it one at a time. I could just go like this. I could go $100 minus 1987. And then I could come up with my answer. I think that would be $90.13. And then I could minus the next thing. And then I get my answer and keep minusing until I get my final answer. So just for the sake of the video, I'm gonna do this really quick so that we've got this. So we're gonna go 90.13 minus 15.99 because that's the hat that he bought. He ends up with 74.14. And then what did he buy after that? He bought a hat, then he bought a lunch. So we'll minus that lunch. Okay, so now he's got 55, 15. And then what did he buy after his lunch? Oh, he bought new shoes. Man, this guy likes spending. Oh, I did my math all wrong down here, didn't I? Let's see, 28, 76, okay. So I'm gonna minus the 2876. He's got 26, oh, I was off by 10 bucks, look at that. There we go. And there's my answer. I've solved, what does he have left? He has 2639 left. Okay, so what I did, $100, minus the shirt, minus the hat, minus the lunch, minus the shoes, this is what he's got left but I had to make sure to do my front end estimation, which was off by 10 bucks. I should have checked it a little closer. There we go. Okay, let's do number B. Now it says front end estimation first. So let's read it. And then we'll try to figure out uh, what the front end estimation should look like. When baking for his latest Tusk project, Johnny needed to buy some ingredients. His mom gave him $10 to use a co-op. In his cart, he put a small bag of sugar for this much, a dozen eggs for that much, packet of baking soda for this much and a liter of milk for this much. Does he have enough? How much does he have left, if any? Well, first it says front end estimation. So let's do that. Let's see. <clears throat> so first he had $10. And then he was minus his sugar was $2.99. So I'm gonna say minus $3. And then eggs were $3.49. So I'm just gonna say three and a half bucks. And then he bought a packet of baking soda for $1.29. What's that closest to, a dollar, a dollar fifty, or two bucks? Dollar, dollar fifty, or two bucks? Dollar fifty? Let's put a, let's put a buck fifty. And then a liter of milk for a dollar ninety-nine. I'll just say two bucks. So what I've done is I've rounded up to get front end estimation. So now I've got uh, ten bucks. Oh, let's zoom out on the camera here. Now I've got my ten bucks. And minus the three dollars, three fifty. That's six fifty, seven fifty, eight. That's almost ten dollars exactly. Whoa, he's cutting it close, isn't he? Yeah. So if he has anything left, it'll be like pennies, right? Oh, okay. So like that's like zero. So he should probably have. If he has anything left, it's going to be like pennies. But now we've got to do our exact. We got ten dollars. So I'm going to bring in my calculator with this, and we're going to do it exact. So he's got $10 and then he minuses, what's the first thing he bought? A small bag of sugar for $2.99. Okay, that gives us $7.01 left. Then he buys a dozen eggs for $3.49 and $7.01 minus, oops, $7.01 minus $3.49 equals $3.52. Then after the eggs, he buys a packet of baking soda. 
129 minus 129. Now he's got 223 left over. After the baking soda, he buys a liter of milk for $1.29 and he ends up with 24 cents left. Whew. Now, let's just forget the fact that tax exists in this world. You know what actually would have happened? He would have gotten to the till and they'd have charged him a little more than $10, wouldn't they? Because yeah. there's still tax on this stuff. Yeah. So if he doesn't pay tax, he's got 24 cents left. If he does, well, then he's going back home and saying, Mom, I need another dollar some. All right. Last but not least, using the table below as a guide, find at least two combinations of numbers that equal the sum. How many possible answers do you think there might be? One, two, three, four, five? Lots? Tons? Yeah, there could be tons. All you have to do to fill in something like this is like this. Um, maybe I'll just go one decimal, two, three, four. But how will I figure out what number goes here to make this? Yeah, I could take the total and minus whatever number I want to put here and get the answer. Here, you want to see a really easy one? There's an easy one. Do you see why that's the easiest? Yeah. But all I have to do is invent a number, take it away from there. Because if I do that, so for example, I'll take the total, and I'm going to minus a number that I just invented at random, although it wasn't very random. Looks like that would put me over the top. So I could just put this plus that equals that. All that is is reversing operations. All right, this is the first of three quizzes. There's two others for you to try. Um, I've got a few questions in review, and if you want to see what those review questions are, you can check the blog uh, later on today. Grade sevens, I'll give you some further questions just like this to work on while I get the eights doing their first quiz review.